just continue to run it. You'll end up using your tailing bucket to, to dump it out, and you just keep it running. Okay. That's a lot. That's good. So when you're dry washing with it, you're doing dry wash tailings, does that go that little probably a little faster, wouldn't it be? Dry wash tailings, I can run uh, a dry washer 151 with a crew all day, and we'll run the tailings out of that or the the concentrates out of that in less than an hour. Okay, that's real good. Okay, we're just finishing up loading this material in. Yep. People that run cleanup devices often use a magnet when they're doing this to take out some of these magnetics. I don't recommend that at all. The idea behind this riffle is that it catches that really fine microgold, and if you use a magnet on it, you're going to find that you're going to disturb that microgold and move it along. So I keep my fingers out of it. The only thing that I do to it is if I'm running really heavy material, is I'm back to my chopstick and I take the chopstick and we'll show this on a close-up but I run the chopstick from the edge to the center on about the top four ripples just to make sure we still have that fluid material moving because those are the most important four ripples in this operation. Um, how often would you clean it up? When the gold starts to fill the ripples down about more than a third, and I mean okay. filled, then I would clean it up. I have seen um, dredge cleanups up in Alaska where it's been yellow down to about here, and we're talking five ounces plus of gold. So most of us that are out doing this on weekends aren't gonna come up with anywhere near that much gold. You don't have to clean it up until you're done with okay. your concentrates. So on time-wise, would you do it like, uh as an average number, like once an hour, once a half hour, if you didn't have if you didn't have all that much gold, I wouldn't clean it up till I was done with my concentrates. Okay, I, I just you're... don't think it needs to be cleaned up. The only thing you need to do is, if you do feel it's getting packed, is just unpack those top ripples. Okay. Using you... the round tip, the gold will actually go right around the tip and won't be disturbed. Okay. And again, we'll show that to you on the close-up. All right, cool. What you'll find when you're running this is that the larger gold will settle itself further down on the mat. You'll see that these ribs here are starting to accumulate the, the coarser gold. Um, that doesn't really worry me. You know, as it works its way down, if it gets too far, you'll want to slow your, your feed down. But what we're really trying to catch here is the really micro gold. And if the camera's showing this, it's actually sitting right on the ridge here, and it will eventually work its way underneath that first riffle. And once it's under here, that micro gold that sits underneath that riffle, it's gonna stay there till you clean up. Okay, we're gonna do a little close up here on the mat and, and how it's working, and get a little closer look at the profile. As the gold comes over the top of the first riffle, the coarser material is actually ended up getting trapped in these little ribs. The really, really fine gold that we're really looking for is actually coming around and ending up right underneath here. When you saw me using the chopstick, I'm moving it from that first rib from the outside to the center, from the outside to the center on about the first four riffles. That's enough to keep that black sand fluid motion going and it'll actually clear out without disturbing the gold. And this will give you a look at the edge profile, how deep it is, and why it can hold so much gold in there if you're lucky enough to find it. So that'll, that'll give you a look at the profile. 